Good afternoon. That's better. Thank you so much. Dalton, Cicero, Harvey, Aurora, Naperville, Southern, Western, and Northern suburbs, the West Side, the South Side, 87th Street Strip Mall, 79th Street Plaza, Central Cam Camera Company, a safe haven, the Elephant Room Gallery, Flamingo's Bar and Grill, Chicago Lunchbox Restaurant, Hyde Park Produce. As we stand here on 47th Street, I want to acknowledge the businesses and people near and far who are moving towards recovery here and across the nation. I'm joined by fellow elected officials, business leaders, community activists, and impacted business owners. We're gathered today while still practicing physical distancing to encourage people to continue to try to help repair the devastation we're facing. I'm heartened by the many thousands who have participated in direct action over the, la the last week, peacefully protesting the recent horrific murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Tony McDade at the hands of the police. The murder of George Floyd was the spark that ignited our country, already stretched thin by the COVID-19 pandemic. More than 100,000 people have died from COVID-19. 40 million people have filed for unemployment. It's no wonder that people are frustrated, traumatized, and exhausted. It's no surprise that they are angry. Along with these protests, we must turn to rebuilding our communities that have been devastated by looting and destruction. We must protect our family-owned, minority-owned businesses who are still cleaning up broken glass and decimated shelves. Like many of these storefronts on 47th Street, which you see behind me, Black and brown businesses throughout the south and west sides of Cook County have been destroyed by looting and vandalism. I applaud the thousands of residents who've already stepped up to join our neighborhood cleanup efforts. And I'm moved when I hear people ask, what can I do to help? So I encourage everyone to continue forward in the spirit of community and follow up marching with volunteer work in your local neighborhood organization and continue to support the businesses that now have been devastated twice, first by COVID-19 and now by property damage. And while it seems small, please complete the census because it's an important action toward rebuilding and investing in our communities. I want to especially thank Vic Mensa for joining us today, hosting us outside the Save Money, Save Life Foundation. He'll speak more in just a few moments about its mission and the wonderful work they're doing with the community during this challenging time. As we move into the weekend, I want to encourage us to continue to remain calm, build our communities, and move towards recovery during these two, these two public health pandemics. Now I'd like to introduce my commissioner, Bill Lowry, who is an old friend and who represents this community. First of all, I want to thank you, President Preckwinkle, uh, for your leadership as we fight now two pandemics, as we fight COVID-19 and as we fight uh, longstanding racism in our communities. I also want to send my heartfelt condolences to the families of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and all the families who have lost loved ones in avoidable tragedies. I stand with the peaceful protesters who are saying we need justice for the lives unjustly taken by law enforcement. These protesters deserve our respect, our support, not violence and intimidation. I stand with those who say to law enforcement, respect me, 
Respect me as your brother, as your sister. Respect me as a human being. And I stand with our small businesses, with our minority business enterprises, with our women business enterprises. I'm here with you, and I'm here for you. And I will work with you to obtain the resources needed to get you back on your feet. For those of you who have remained quiet during this time, you are complicit. For those of you who have chosen to use this time to loot, to burn, to distract us from the movement of bringing justice for lives lost to police brutality, we say, stop it. Stop destroying our small businesses. Stop destroying our black-owned businesses. Plano and Dr. Stephanie Johnson, and you're going to hear from Dr. Johnson later today, she is a personal friend, and she and Plano provided long-term therapy for one of my children who needed eye therapy. Our businesses are important. We will not let you destroy our businesses. We will not let you destroy our communities. Our community is resilient. I'm so proud of the unity that we have seen with cleanup efforts. I'm so proud to say we're going to rebuild even stronger. So to all of you, I say be safe, be healthy, and be blessed. Now I'm going to ask Rebecca Shee to come up. Rebecca is with the American Business Immigration Coalition. Rebecca. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, uh, President Preckwinkle. Uh, my name is Rebecca, and I'm the director of the American Business Immigration Coalition which is co-chaired by Mr. Sam Scott, John Rowe, Josh Hoy, Raul Ramundo. Um, yesterday, Mr. Scott actually testified in front of the House uh, Committee uh, in Congress about uh, the Paycheck Protection Program and making sure that it reaches more black businesses and minority-owned businesses. Um, we also praise President Preckwinkle's leadership in terms of providing technical assistance to all of our minority-owned businesses in suburban Cook. Um, the mission of my organization is federal immigration reform, um, but I got involved in this cause because my mother was undocumented and she had an order of deportations for 19 years. My mom lived in fear of the police and she lived in fear of being separated from our family for 19 years. In 1984, Mayor Harold Washington put his full support behind a Puerto Rican cab driver named Luis Gutierrez, who later became a congressman and stopped my mother's deportation. Today, under the terror regime of President Trump, my mom is a US citizen, thanks to the first black mayor of Chicago. Um, when President Preckwinkle was first elected county president, she threw her full weight behind a measure to cut off all interaction between law enforcement and federal immigration ICE agents. When she uh, was uh, confronted with intense pushback, she stood even stronger with us, with the undocumented. Her Cook County Sanctuary Ordinance is now a gold standard for the country. After President Trump was elected, Representative Emmanuel Chris Welch of Illinois 7th District passed the Trust Act to protect undocu Im undocumented immigrants from federal ICE agents. And it was signed into a law by a Republican governor, Bruce Rauner. Mayor Washington, President Preckwinkle, Representative Welch are three black leaders that use their immense clout and power to protect undocumented immigrants from the police. Birthright citizenship is a result of the Civil War to end slavery. Most of the Chinese and Asian and Latino immigration to the U.S. came from the civil rights movement, removing the pro-European discrimination in the 1965 immigration reform. So I am standing here to, today to say black lives matter because black lives delivered our American dream, because black leaders have been the immigrants' fortress against hate and injustice, because the most vulnerable immigrants, like my mother, wouldn't be here today if not for black people standing up for her. So I'm incredibly grateful to you, I am indebted to you, and I will work to protect you and keep your families together. Um, I just want to share some resources for uh, businesses uh, in this time of COVID and uh, if you've experienced property damage, um, you can contact us at abic.us, that's abic.us, to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program 
And because of the Senate and House revamp yesterday, you will have 24 weeks to use the money. It becomes a grant and will help you to make it forgivable. Um, and then on the Cook County Recovery Initiative website, please visit the Cook County Re Recovery Initiative website and we'll have more information on all recovery initiatives. Thank you very much. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a community leader in Chinatown, uh, David Wu, who is the president of the Coalition for a Chinese American Community. David? Good morning. Thank you, uh, President Preckwinkle, for giving Asian Americans a chance to speak out on uh, uh, the concerns of our country uh, due to George Floyd. You know, it's always difficult. It's always difficult to speak on behalf of Asian Americans because we're from different uh, cultures and languages and, and uh, countries. Uh, s some of uh, our young people were out protesting along with everyone else over the weekend, uh, but there's others who were looted. Their businesses were looted, and others are, are fearful. So it's always hard to, to, to uh, capture what our community thinks. And so these are some of my thoughts. And as a community leader, I hope it becomes the thoughts and values of others. For the past four months, Chinese Americans and Asian Americans have been spat upon, called racial slurs, and physically assaulted because of COVID-19. But none of this compares to the treatment of African Americans uh, that African Americans face every day nor the horrific murder of George Floyd by a corrupt police officer. My community's response to problems is to provide material help. Uh, that's because our parents raised us, um, not by telling us that they love us, but making sure that we're well fed and well clothed. So we've responded to COVID by feeding and providing masks to anyone vulnerable in and out of Chinatown. This instinct led our church um, in Chinatown together at 6 a.m. on Sunday and Monday to help clean up Chinatown, South Loop, Back of the Yards, in Bronzeville. One of the stores that we cleaned is not far from here. Uh, my, my heart broke for the owner who spent his life building a, a business and for the employees who likely have lost their job. And that looting overshadows just lawful and peaceful protesting. George Floyd's death is also a call for Asian Americans to do more than our instinct, to take care of ourselves and occasionally someone else. It calls us to join the cries for the systemic and personal change needed to end racism. We as Asian Americans have benefited from the civil rights battle fought by the African Americans. We need to acknowledge this debt, examine our own prejudices, and speak up. This is not easy, as sometimes there's a language gap, uh, but it is hard, and it's hard because we would rather not get involved, think racism is mainly a black and white issue, and are too quick to dehumanize others. The Coalition of Asian American Leaders of Minnesota issued an open letter calling our community out for its complacency. The, the letter ends with this. Let us stand united for black lives, not only when lives are lost, but in everyday recognition that our liberation is tied together. Let us also commit to the ongoing work of addressing the anti-blackness in our own communities and choose to fight for black lives the way we would our own. May God have mercy on us all. The next speaker is Jonathan Swain, uh, who owns Kimbark Liquors in Hyde Park. Oh, good, afternoon. good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Swain, and I am the owner of Kimbark Beverage Shop, Kimbark Liquors in Hyde Park. Uh, Kimbark Beverage Shop, Kimbark Liquors, was established in 1963. Uh, my father purchased it in 1974, making him one of the first black business owners in Hyde Park. And since that time, the business has been in my family uh, with my sister for many years and from, with me for the last 12. Um, we were affected uh, by the civil unrest of, of last week. Um, at about 1.30 in the morning, a group of people in about 10 cars, 20 people, came, uh, broke our doors, ran our store, and uh, ransacked, our, ransacked our business. Um, I, I, I want to echo uh, something President Preckwinkle said. She said that the, the, the George Floyd death was the wick that ignited a powder keg. 
But let's talk about what that powder keg was filled with. It was filled with generation upon generation upon generation of racial injustice and economic injustice. And, and COVID-19 was the accelerant and George Wick was the light. And so we've seen in the past week, we've seen protests, we've seen civil disobedience, we've also seen uh, looters, and we saw what happened in my business, burglary, by the, uh, burglary under the guise of civil unrest. Um, I don't condone burglary, I don't condone looting at all. Uh, but we all understand all four of the things that I named are rooted in the same frustration that's been going on for, gen for generations. I'll also say that when it comes to business moving forward, black businesses are extremely challenged. Businesses started because of household wealth and access to bank loans. And oftentimes the bank loans come from having household wealth. A recent study that came out in CNN recently said that white households have 10 times the wealth of black households. So when it comes to rebuilding our businesses in our community, our, our homes, our families do not have the wealth to rebuild and don't have the wealth to, to provide collateral for bank loans. So we are in a more desperate challenge. So what I would encourage folks to do as we move forward, let's channel our energies in the right direction towards protest and civil disobedience. Let's make sure that we are investing in our businesses. Let's keep the spotlight on the, on the real cause of our frustration, not how we communicate it. Uh, next, you'll have Libby Herrera from Lynn Air South Insurance Group, North Riverside. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm an insurance advisor in the North Riverside area. I'm sure all of you. I'm an insurance advisor. My name is Libby Herrera uh, from Lenara's Insurance. And I've been fielding calls from business owners concerned if they have the right coverage. And so we have been recovering from COVID and I just want to thank um, President Preckwinkle for pushing for the PPP funds on behalf of brown and black uh, business owners. The PPP funds have helped my business tremendously in this time, but now we're facing um, more uncertainty with all of this going on. And I just really, being born and raised from Little Village, uh, as a Latina business owner and in the insurance industry for 20 years now, this is something that I've never seen before, but I really feel that these are discussions that we need to be having in our own communities with our own children, with our own family members to kind of check our hearts and purify our hearts. I just pray, you know, that, that we could have unity and, and really come together to see that we're stronger when we work together. And, um, one of the things that they asked me to speak about is, um, you know, uh, talking to my children and having to educate them through this e-learning and now this incident, I said, you know, what happened to George Floyd was wrong. And you saw other officers there. And we have to have the courage to stand up for what's right, um, to be the difference, to not just go with the flow, not just, you know, go with what society tells us or what the norm is. We have to have the courage to stand up and do what's right. And so they've asked me to speak about business insurance and things that businesses can do in this time. And one thing that I encourage you all to do is to sit down with a professional insurance advisor and go through your coverages. Go through what's covered and what's not covered. One thing that I see a lot of times that business owners make the mistake of just carrying the general liability that the city of Chicago or that the city that you're doing business in is making you carry, that's not going to cover your personal property. That's not going to cover your loss of income. That's not going to recuperate everything you lose in the event of a vandalism or a theft. And so you have to sit down with your insurance advisor and you have to, one of the things that people often get is a small business owner's package which entails a lot of the basic things that small businesses need. And so um, going through the coverages and making sure that you have enough coverage for your inventory and then making sure that you have coverage for business interruptions so that in the event um, that your, your business is broken into and it's not rebuilt for another month, you're able to recoup those losses. And then also making sure that you have replacement cost, full replacement cost, not actual cash value, but replacement cost to replace everything that you lose. And then the business interruption, as I stated before, but really coming together and having conversations, uh, brown, black, and white, and really getting to, to, 
together and, and unite to make a difference when we vote when we come out and we, and we just stand for justice and do the right thing, and it starts at home. I really feel that it starts at home, educating our community, and one of the other speakers said, what can you do? And so I'm asking myself that question. What can I do on my block? What can I do on my community? What can I do in my church? And that's a question that I think we all gotta be asking ourselves right now, is how we play a part and how we can make a difference. And so my prayers are with the city of Chicago and with the nation. Thank you, President Preckwinkle. And now I'd like to introduce from, um, Plano Vision Center, Dr. Stephanie Johnson, uh, Plano Vision Center, Grand Boulevard. Thank you. Good evening, or good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, President Prattwinkle and Commissioner Lowry for uh, giving me this opportunity uh, to just express not only the, the sadness I felt on Sunday when I actually watched a, our particular place of business being looted. But throughout the day, on May 31st, Plano Vision Center, one of Chicago's oldest black-owned vision centers, was damaged and looted. My father, the Dr. Robert, late Dr. Robert L. Johnson, founded the center for the purpose of servicing our community. And that's why we're located in the Grand Boulevard Mall. It's been a fixture on the South Side since 1959, providing vision care and not-for-profit services to children, adults, and families in need, including frequent visits to the Chicago Public School students. Our work has served thousands of low-income and minority families through, through vision health, education workshops, vision exams, and vision therapy treatment services. I don't want to just leave here on a grim note saying it was sad watching your business being looted and then coming back the next morning, uh, walking in, and you don't need to open the door to turn off the alarm because the windows were all broken. I don't need to say how sad it is just to see my entire business boarded up. What I do want to say is thank you to all of those young people that came out that day and helped with the cleanup. All of the young people there now cleaning up that particular mall because that Saturday that mall was vibrant and then on Monday it was like something hit that was unconceivable. Please consider providing a tax deductible donation to rebuild this important community fixture in order to maintain access to vision health care for our community. All funds raised on this page will go towards supporting the restoration and reopening of the center because we will rebuild Plano. We will continue to be there for the community. We thank you all for the donations, the kind messages, and the prayer. Although this is a tough time for Plano, we know that the property damaged on Sunday, it can be replaced. It doesn't compare to the devastating loss of Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tony McDade, Ahmaud Arbery, and the countless of other black lives lost to anti-black violence. We stand with our community in solidarity and ongoing calls for justice. So for more information, just visit our website at www.planovision.org. Thanks again for having me. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure now to introduce Vic Mensa. Uh, Vic, as you know, is a internationally known musician from our hometown. Vic? My name is Vic Mensa, founder of Save Money, Save Life, 47th Street resident. And I was asked to come here today to march against anti-looting. 
but I can't take a single step if it's not against the economic and social looting of our communities that creates generational poverty and generational disenfranchisement, that lights the gas can. Yeah, 47th Street is burned down. But if you really want to clean up our community, don't wait until it burns down. We talk about looting, right? Then let's talk about the real looting. The real looting is the schools closed across the south and west sides right now. Well, they plan to open a new police academy. That's the real looting. The real looting is the black bodies being stolen by police officers in our city and across our nation. The real looting is the looting of the body of George Floyd, the looting of the body of Laquan McDonald, the looting of the body of Rakia Boyd, the looting of the body of Breonna Taylor, the looting of the body of Ronnie Man Johnson. The real looting is big businesses coming into our neighborhood to take advantage of tax breaks. Well, our black workers' labor is being exploited and looted by those said big businesses as they try to feed their families on sub-minimum wages without collective bargaining rights. What I will march for is an end to police brutality. What I, mil what I will march for is defunding police. This is not a situation of bad apples. Tell George Floyd's family that was a bad apple. Tell Laquan McDonald's family that was a bad apple. Only so many bad apples and you must have a rotten tree. At which point, we need to cut the tree down and replant it. In defunding the police, I will march for those resources being put into our community and invested into housing and employment and health care and mental health care in our communities. There's no reason why the Chicago police need to be 40% of the budget. We all see the videos. We see they're not capable of much more than brutality. And we continue to fund them and we continue to raise their budget. How do you meet protests based off of police brutality with increased brutality. And then they give us a curfew, which is really an excuse for police to single out and beat up black and brown kids around the city. If you've been outside past 9 p.m., you know that. If you really wanna help us, if you really wanna help this community and our community, invest that money that you're investing into the police into us. Invest that money, and don't tell us not to be mad. Invest that money into the community. That's why the city's burning down. That's why we support a civilian elected police review board, support CPAC. And if you wanna march with us, today we'll be marching for Chicago Public Schools to cut all ties with the Chicago Police Department. That's where we're marching to, that's what we're marching for today. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you very much. Before we take any questions, uh, I want to acknowledge Walter Matthews and Darlene Washington, who have provided sign language interpretation for us. Thank you both. I want to acknowledge Rhonda McFarland from the Quad Communities Development Corporation, which has sponsored a special service area for 47th Street here to support the business community. And I want to acknowledge Aaron Collard, who is the property owner of several of the businesses along here and was good enough to, uh, to encourage some of his tenants to participate in this, uh, in this event. So thank you. All right, are there questions? Nick, do you want to? Uh, yeah, you want we've, we've got one from the Sun Times, so before we do, is there anyone else here who has a question in the reporters? All right, the one question we have from the Sun Times is, uh, what is the county planning to do Monetary assistance to businesses that have been 
So the county has been uh, working with our partners and actually Re Rebecca from the American Immigration Business Coalition, um, the Illinois Restaurant Association, Sam Toya, and the National Partnership for New Communities to support um, our small businesses, our gig workers, our independent contractors, and our not-for-profits uh, through a technical assistance network that you can learn more about at cookcountyil.gov, that's G-O-V, forward slash recovery. cookcountyil.gov forward slash recovery. And we've focused on, on very small businesses, 25 employees or less, because the Small Business Administration and the uh, Paycheck Protection Program that was part of the CARES Act uh, did not have, was not focused uh, on the very small businesses that we know are the heart of our neighborhoods. So um, I would encourage you to go to cookcountyil.gov forward slash recovery, uh, and we have a technical assistance network that can uh, help you provide, find resources to support your small businesses, your not-for-profits, and those of you who are gig workers can, to, can get help there as well. All right, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're very grateful for your presence. I particularly want to thank uh, the participants in our, in our news conference, my commissioner, Bill Lowry, Rebecca Shee from the Bar American Business Immigration Coalition for your very powerful personal testimony, David Wu from the Coalition for a Better Chinese American Community, Libby Herrera from Linares Insurance Group. I hope I didn't mutilate that too much, Libby, where are you? Uh, Jonathan Swain from Kimbark Liquors, Dr. Stephanie Johnson from Plano Vision, Vision Center, and of course our own Vic Mensa. Thank you. <laughs>